So what you're looking at is the first photograph of our Earth fully illuminated that any of us ever saw. It was taken on the last of the Apollo missions and it fundamentally changed the way that humanity thought about our common home. It reminds us that we're all connected and all of our actions have a direct impact on our planet. So there's really only three questions remaining about the climate crisis and those are, must we change, can we change, and will we change? The first question has long been answered by scientists that yes, we must change, but now mother nature is telling us. So the sky is not this vast and limitless expanse the way it appears to us as we stand on the ground and look up. In reality, there's just this thin shell of atmosphere that surrounds our planet. And we are putting 110 million tons of global warming pollution into this atmosphere every single day. This pollution, especially carbon dioxide, is building up and it's trapping heat. So I'm going to briefly explain the science behind global warming. And just to be clear, this has been understood by scientists since the 19th century. Energy from the sun comes to the earth in the form of light. That energy is absorbed by the earth and warms it. Some of that energy is re-radiated from the earth in the form of outgoing heat, and that outgoing heat is trapped by our atmosphere, which is actually a good thing because it's kept our planet at a stable temperature all these years, but now we're thickening our atmosphere with this heat warming pollution, and it's causing our planet to warm at an unprecedented rate. So there are a lot of factors that go into climate change, but the biggest is fossil fuels, the burning of which emits carbon dioxide. So as we look at this graph, we see that our fossil fuel usage has gone up exponentially since World War II. And although there is a bit of a leveling off as our planet adopts greener solutions, 80% of our energy consumption is still accounted for by fossil fuels. So as our fossil fuel usage has gone up, our temperatures have risen dramatically. We're currently one degree higher than pre-industrial levels. And 16 of the 17 hottest years on record have occurred since 2001. 2016 is the hottest year to date. And last year marked the 41st consecutive year with a temperature above the 20th century average. Our oceans are taking in 93% of this heat trapping energy. And this is causing storms Cy uh, cyclones, hurricanes, typhoons, all these ocean-based storms to be stronger and more destructive because as our temperatures increase, our oceans evaporate more moisture into the sky and this causes downpours to be heavier and storms to be more destructive. So in the pre-industrial era, the risk of a Hurricane Sandy level intensity storm was once every 500 years. In 2017, that number went up to once in 25 years. And in the near future, we're going to see this level superstorm happen once every five years. And last year, Losses from weather-related disasters alone totaled to a jarring $320 billion. So not only is this threatening people's livelihood, it's extremely costly. And if we continue on this business-as-usual emission scenario that we're currently on, we're going to see our soil get drier and drier, and we're going to be spun into severe hydrological and agricultural droughts. It's predicted that by 2080, 3.2 billion people will be under water stress. And as our temperatures go up, we're also seeing our fire seasons go up, and us Californians know that we've had really severe fire seasons, and our fire season in the western United States is 100 days longer than it was in 1970. Currently, 80% of our world's population is under water scarcity, and all of these facets of modern life are going to require even more water than they already do. Climate change is also threatening our livelihood. It's a medical emergency. You might be wondering, how does it affect our health? In reality, it affects our health virtually in every single way, making this issue not just environmental or political or economic, but also personal. Deaths from pollution alone are attributed 7 million people every single year. Places like Russia, India, and China are really feeling the brunt of this pollution on its people. Not only is pollution becoming more prevalent, so is the spread of tropical disease. There's a direct correlation between rising temperatures and the spread of diseases. This means that something as deadly as Zika can take root in a lot more places. We're also seeing all of our living species come under threat. So take the sea turtle, for example. Their sex is dependent on their surrounding temperature when they're embryos. So because the global, the Great Barrier Reef is warming, now 99% of young green sea turtles are female. And this lack of male fertility is sure to cause a population collapse, most likely extinction. In the period between 1970 and 2012, we saw our marine vertebrae species decline by 50%. And it's predicted that all of our living species, so that's plant, marine animal, and land animal, are at risk of becoming extinct by the end of this century. 
So what is the cost of carbon? It's political instability, wildfires. We can turn the sound down. <laughs> it's a lot of things that I haven't even begun to touch on. So the answer to the question, must we change, is an unequivocal yes, we have to change our entire way of life, our future, our children's future, it's all being threatened by climate change. So now, can we even change? Is it even possible? That was the answer to the first question. Can we change? That's actually pretty exciting. So when we take a look at renewable energy, it was predicted that by 2010, our wind energy would reach 30 gigawatts. In reality, we exceeded that prediction 16 times over. Globally, there's enough wind energy to satisfy all of our world's consumption 40 times over. And when we turn to solar, we see even more exciting projections. So it was predicted that the solar industry would grow one gigawatt per year by 2010. In reality, we exceeded this goal by a factor of 17 times over in 2010. And as of last year, we exceeded that goal 98 times over. So the potential for solar is virtually limitless. There's enough solar produced every hour to satisfy all of our world's energy needs for an entire year. And while resources like natural gas, oil, and coal are finite, the sun is probably going to keep shining for like five billion more years. So we're fine for now on solar. And not only is the solar industry going, so are the jobs associated with solar. It's actually growing nine times faster than the overall economy. Me. Just eight years ago, LED lights only accounted for 1% of the global lighting market, and in the coming decade, we're going to see LEDs take over the entire market because they're cheaper. They save people money and they save our emissions. We're also seeing a huge surge in the electric vehicles on the road. Virtually every relevant auto manufacturing company has plans for electric vehicles. All of these ones already have models in production. We're also going to see all of our buses become electric, so in Santa Monica, Blig Big Blue Bus committed to an all-electric fleet by 2030. And since making that commitment, we've cut our overall emissions 62%, which is really exciting. 13 cities globally have committed to all-electric bus fleets by 2025. And though this is just 13 cities, this accounts for 80 million people and 60,000 buses, which is a huge impact. So the answer to the second question of can we change is also yes, we have every single solution we need available to us right now. It's all about implementing it. So now we have to turn to the third question of will we change? And the answer to this is also exciting. So at the 2015 Paris climate negotiations, virtually every nation agreed to phase down their greenhouse gas emissions to net zero emissions as early in the second half of this century as possible. And on June 1st of 2017, President Trump announced his intent to withdraw the United States from the Paris Agreement. The reality is that we cannot withdraw from this agreement until the day after the 2020 presidential election. So we have the power to stay in the Paris Agreement and we're already in it. So it's more important than ever that cities, companies, and states take the lead on climate. And we are seeing a bunch of US cities already sign and commit to become 100% renewable on August 28th of 2018, which was the second day of my training with Al Gore. California signed SB 100, which committed us to 100% renewable energy. We're also seeing a few cities that are already there, have already reached 100% renewability, which is really exciting. We're also seeing a lot of our companies go renewable, and this isn't just small local companies. These are the companies that we think of as being the global leaders in our industry. So in the words of Jerry Brown, if the president is going to be AWOL in this profoundly important human endeavor, then California and other states will step up. So please join us and use your choices, your votes, and your voices, and fight like your world depends on it, because your world depends on it. Thank you.